Hey everybody, thanks for tuning in to 4722 Dominique. As you can see, we are doing pork chops today. I've already seasoned this with basic um, salt and pepper. I put a little bit more so you can kind of see what I do. And um, just a pinch of salt. Well, I actually have a good bit of salt. Not too much salt. You don't want them too salty. But anyway, I just use regular salt and uh, regular pepper. I have some pork chops in the pan frying. And as you can see back here, I am steaming this pork chop back here because I'm going to make my gravy from a uh, scratch. So I just season that with salt and pepper and accent as well. What you're going to do is flip this every two minutes or so. You want to brown it just like that. You don't want to overcook it because you're going to put it back in that gravy. And you want to use all these good juices that back here for your gravy as well. And right over here I have my pan of, um, well not my pan, but my saucer full of onions. And this is the onion that I'm using and I have the accent over here. So I can take the accent and just kind of, you know, put it around the pot a little bit to bring out that flavor that I want. So I'm going to also, while I'm over here, go ahead and turn these pork chops over. And these are the uh, center cooks. The center cut chop. Just turn that over like that. And I got them cooking on number four, which is low, because you want to get all that flavor in there as much as possible. So you cook everything slow. That's the key thing. And I'm going to take these pork chops here and put them in the pan as well. And I have my flour over here in the extra plate. So really you don't need too much ingredients for this. I may take a little uh, onion powder and my garlic powder for that uh, gravy as well. And if you have buttermilk, you can take a teaspoon of that buttermilk and make it into this um, gravy over here with chicken broth. But I don't have my chicken broth today, so what I'm going to have to do since I don't have is improvise. Uh, with just a bunch of onions, water, uh -oh, water, and um, that gravy master. It might not be gravy master. Let me check and see exactly what it is. It's um, hang on a quick second. Kitchen bouquet. That's it. Right there. So, what I'm gonna do? Now, in a little bit, is take that off, take this pork chop back here off because, like I said, you don't want to uh, cook it all that long because it's going to cook again inside of that, um, it's going to cook again inside that gravy. So you don't want to cook it too long. Okay. So now what I'm going to do is take, and I know I'm moving a lot, so I'm sorry, guys. Take it off because I feel like it's cooked long enough. And I'm just going to sit it to the side on this plate over here. And you got your little roux going in this pot over here. You don't want to lose that. So go ahead and start to saute your onions. You're going to turn that eye down to like two or really low so your onions can go ahead and saute a little bit. I'm going to add a little bit more accent to that. And you're going to let those get kind of brown, you know, real soft. And then just add your pork chop back in after you pour your water on. So hang on a second. I'll be back in a minute and let you guys uh, see exactly how that gravy um, is turning out. So stay tuned for part two in a moment. Okay, now, y'all, yeah, remember when I was telling you guys about what those onions should look like before you try to, you know, add whatever to it? This is what they should start to look like after you saute them kind of like a brownish look. You got that good roux on them now. And those juices, I call it roux. <laughs> but anyway, that's how they should look. And it's just about time, as you can see, for me to take these um, pork chop out. I still had them on four cooking kind of low. They smell good. They look good. 
Okay, and over here I had added about four big tablespoons of flour and water. This is how you're going to thicken your gravy up if you don't have chicken broth, Lipton onion soup, or whatever you know you use for um, your gravy. This is how you're going to thicken it up. All right, I'm just going to pour a little bit of that flour, water on top of that. Just a little bit at a time because you don't want those, um, what you call it, those big bubbles to come in it. You're just going to pour a little bit of that flour, water on it, and it's going to start to get really, really thick in a few minutes here. After I turn it up, I had to turn the heat up on it. So you're going to pour that on there. And then you're going to take your, um, that kitchen, it looks nasty now, I know. But that's why you're going to put the browner in it. That kitchen bouquet that I was telling you guys, that I showed you, you're going to take a little bit of that and pour it around it. Then you're going to take um, a cup of water in your measuring cup and add it to it. And that's what's going to make your gravy real dark. You see how that just turned really, really dark for me. It smells fantastic. It don't look fantastic just yet, but it smells really good. And I need more water. So as you begin to stir, you'll start to notice um, how much water you need and when you need to stop or whatever. And I keep that flour water over there because you want to keep thickening it as you go. All right. You got that kind of in there. Really, really good. Now it's time for me to take that piece of uh, pork chop that I had sauteed over there without the flour that I fried. It's time for me to take that out of that plate and add it to that gravy for that pork chop uh, flavor. And you're going to place that in the center here. All right? And that's going to begin to steam in a little bit. Put your lid back on, keep it on low, and just let that thing cook down, simmer down some. So now it's time for me to take a look at the back of this meat. You see, because it was so thick, you had to let it cook longer because you don't want it to be not done in the center of it because these are center cut, so they're thicker than the thin cut. All right, you take that out and let that juice uh, drip out of there. And be careful because I just had the, um, some of that grease rolling back on my fingers and it's, it'll burn you. Okay, and just kind of shake the excess grease off. Get your paper towels on your plate that you're going to place them in. And put it on your plate over here. Okay, and while that's still kind of cooking in the center just a little bit more, maybe about two minutes more, I'm going to take this salt and pepper seasoning and a little bit of accent pork chop into the flour over here. I'm sorry, y'all know I'm working with this camcorder and it's just moving everywhere. And you want to just flour that up really good. Sorry you guys, my video abruptly went out. But what I was telling you, I've already taken that other one out of the plate and put, the, put it in there because the video cut off so quick. But what I was saying is you want to get that flour on there really good. And the less flour you use, but make sure it's coated, um, it won't, the skin won't be as um, thick or crispy or whatever. If you like crispy, crispy um, pork chops or chicken, then you just put more flour on here when you put it in the pan. I don't want it too crunchy, but I don't want it, you know, not enough good crisp skin either. So I just put just enough and just shake the excess off. So, let me grab that one I told you I had to leave in for a few moments. Out of there. It's, it can come out now. Okay. And like I said, careful. Hold it downward. And just shake that off. 
Okay. Sorry, y'all. My video keeps clipping off for some reason, but that's the overall finished result of what that uh, roux is going to look like, which is your gravy. It turned out really good. I love the way it turned out. And this is the rice, because you want your rice good and flaky like that, falling off the spoon. You don't want no bubblegum stick rice. And I still have this frying in here, and you know, the pork chops are over here. So, thanks. For